salmon. Uh, we, have, we have two different basic classifications of fish. We have flatfish and round fish. Flatfish are things like flounder, sole, halibut, even though halibut can be really big, it's still a flatfish, okay, because they lay on the bottom. Uh, this is a round fish because it's mostly shaped round, okay? Trout, salmon, tuna, things like that, okay? Um, and then from that we break them down into saltwater and fresh brush. Freshwater, we're talking about uh, fish too. So this is a saltwater fish, our sloppy is a freshwater fish. Uh, and then we got other types of fish that we call shellfish. So we got crustaceans like lobster, uh, uh, shrimp, crawdaddies, that we got, we got crawdaddy tail, we can't, can't really it, or crayfish, whatever you call them. And then there's, there's, a, there's a whole plethora of species of, of shellfish that you guys probably haven't even seen, especially crustaceans. Um, and it really varies on where you live in the world. The lobsters are different in Europe than they are here. Uh, and even the ones that we get down south in Mexico are a little bit different than the ones we get up in Maine. So it's important to know, you know at least a few different types and, and how to prepare them. Uh, and then we have things like mollusks. Mollusks would be clams, uh, mussels, oysters. Yeah, yeah, oysters. Snails. Snails, sea snails, mollusks. Okay, because we have bivalves, which are the ones that have the, the two shells. We have scallops, and, and then the snails are a different type. Um, and then we have cephalopods, which are also shellfish, and those are things like squid, octopus. So those are shellfish. They have a shell, it just happens to be inside. It's yes. And if you ever if you ever break down a squid, you'll see they have a little. It, it, it's like a, we call it a we call it a pen or a feather. It looks like a little. It actually looks like a little bird feather on the inside. What are those called again? Hmm? What are those called? Cephalopods. Grows on the ground. Truffles and mushrooms. Yeah. Like sea, sea urchins. Sea urchins. Pretty sure that. Uh, are sea urchins? I don't think. I think sea urchins are different type. Actually, sure we're going to classify the sea urchin. But for the sea urchin, we only eat its, uh, its growth. Okay. So let's break this guy down. Our petty. <laughs> So I want to make sure this guy is pretty dry. And the way that we do this in the kitchen is a lot different than the way you see him do it at the fish market. We even use different knives, we use different technique. Uh, and it's, it just really depends. There's a lot of different ways to break down a fish. Today I'm going to show you a way that you've probably never seen before. Um, what we look for when we buy a fish though, especially if, especially if we're buying a whole fish, we take a look at the eyeball. Make sure it's nice and clear. If it's really cloudy, it means it's either been on ice for too long, probably maybe it's been frozen a little bit, or also it, it may have been just been sitting out. Used. So we make sure that the eye is really nice and clear, and then we take a look up underneath on the gills. The gills really shouldn't be brown, it should be nice and bright red. This one's so, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of red, kind of brown. Uh, not, not too bad. Uh, but if you notice that they're like gray or like super nasty and they stink, uh, it's no good. So then you want to smell the fish. It should not smell like fish, it should smell like the ocean. Okay, it smells nice and fresh. This one smells beautiful. You always want to smell it because if it smells icky, then don't test it. It's not right. Uh, also, we touch the fish on the outside. It should feel moist. It shouldn't be dried out because it's been dried out. It's been sitting out too long. It shouldn't be like wrinkly, dried out skin, and it shouldn't be slimy either. It shouldn't have like a layer of uh, opaque slime on it because that means that it's also been used in some way. So this one's really nice and moist, and then we poke the flesh. Not hard because we don't want to bruise it, but we poke it. It should spring back, right? Like it's still, like it's still alive. If you put your finger in there, and the finger just goes straight in and it makes an indentation and stays in there, then that that's another indicator that it's not exactly the freshest piece of fish. And then we look at the fins, right? Take a look at each fin uh, and make sure that this guy doesn't have any kind of signs of disease. So the fins should all be intact when you buy a piece of fish. And these guys look pretty good. Okay. Be really careful when you check the fins because especially on this guy and those tilapia, they have really spiky fins on the top and they get infected really easily when you get cut with one of the 
that. So you just always be really careful and don't ever try to go against the grain on the fish. Okay? Any questions about how to tell if the fish is fresh? Also, take a look on the inside. Make sure everything's cool going on on the inside. If you see anything out of the ordinary, don't buy the fish. Send it back. Will those fish in the market be the uh, Yeah, uh, I, would, I would highly... I would never buy fish that have their guts still in them for the restaurant because guts smell awful. And the only way that you're going to get rid of them is either in your trash can and then some, some cook is going to put them down the garbage disposal and forget about it. Your restaurant's going to stink for weeks. Uh, I just, I, I would caution you against ever buying fish with entrails because there's no reason you would ever need to use the entrails. And actually, uh, botulism can be found in the entrails of fish. So it's best that we just have the fishmonger take care of that. Okay? I made the mistake one time of buying a bunch of flounder with the entrails still in there. Never did. No special knife you This? This is red knife. So this is the same as your serrated. So why are you choosing to use a bread knife? I will show you. Uh, it may seem kind of odd that I'm using a bread knife on a fish, but what I found is that, especially for very large fish, this actually makes my job a whole lot easier. So what we have on, on any fish, we have the backbone uh, that runs pretty much, you can actually see it right here, all the way down the fish. And then certain fish have the bones that radiate out from there, usually up towards the fins and the spine. And then sometimes you'll have ones with little pin bones that stick out from there, like this fish. So when we cut through it, if we use a straight blade, sometimes it gets caught on there and it tears up the flesh. When I use a serrated knife though, and I pull it through, every time it comes out really nice. It's gonna be a little bit more waste. Uh, we'll have a little bit left over on the bone. Oh, we got some sushi, uh, we got some sushi enthusiasts around here somewhere that you guys are gonna scrape all that off. You can make it like the same, right? So, first thing, first cut that I'm gonna make, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check, I'm gonna feel up here by the head. We don't wanna waste anything. If I were just to take this head, hack it off, right, I would waste a lot of meat. But if I'm gonna eat the fish head, maybe a little extra meat there. Here in America, you don't see a lot of people eating fish head. So I'm gonna cut straight up towards the brain, okay? And then I'm gonna flip it over, and I'm gonna make sure to take this head completely off. And there's a reason I take it completely off in the beginning. Some people don't. Okay? But I want to take it off in the beginning so that when I flip this fish over, after the first initial cut, I have this little shelf to work on. But after the first initial cut, if the head's still on, then uh, it pushes the body up, and it's hard to get that second piece nice, nice and clean off the head. So there's our fish head. Did I get you? Mm. Careful. You're in the splash zone. <laughs> Don't worry. You won't die. Uh, and then and then again, I just I just go through and I make sure that it's really nice and dry. So if I had to just cut that off, look at all I need that over. So filleting a salmon is actually quite easy. Uh, and a lot of the times when people run into trouble with it, it's because they feel a little bit nervous and then their knife cuts get a little shaky. So just believe in yourself. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna find that spine bone that's right there. And I'm going to use that as a guide. And you can hear those little, you can hear that little crunch, right? I'm going to make sure that the belly's up so that I'm not cutting through the belly meat. And then I'm just going to cut all the way down using the backbone as a guide. So I'm resting the knife on the backbone, the spine. And you can hear it and you can also feel it. When I get down here, I want to make sure that I'm above that anal fin. That fin. Gotcha. Okay, and then all the way down to the bottom. All right, and I'm going to pull it off. Have a nice clean salmon, right? Beautiful, right? I told you, right? you guys were worried about the serrated knife. You're like, this guy's an idiot. <laughs> but that's what I said the first time I saw somebody do it, too. I haven't seen a lot of people do it. I'm like, what is this guy doing? Right tool for the right job. This is the perfect tool for the job. And your guys' bread knives are good, too. So it comes out really nice, but you'll notice that there's some bones right up underneath here. And there's, there's going to be a little bit of waste, but not if we get to it and we work with it, right? We can scrape all this off, and you guys can utilize that, right? Spoon. Spoon. <laughs> so I will let somebody else do the other half. So 
with this right here, we wrapped our station in plastic wrap, keep it all nice and clean. And then the next thing that we have to do is we have to go through with our knife, and this time we won't use the we won't use the, this knife because this will tear the meat up. I have on my mise en place tray. It's a nice fish knife. So when you we have a knife for fish that you're going to use to fillet fish or work with fish, you want it to be nice and flexible, okay? And you want it to be extremely sharp. And this knife that I have for fish, I only use for fish because I want it to be sharp all the time. If I started using it for other things, it just it just wouldn't be quite as sharp. So you see this belly meat here, right? Just feel along there. You can feel a couple of bones that run right along there. We want to get right up underneath those bones and take them right off. Okay? But there's also some bones in here a little bit later on. So what we'll do is we'll make really nice even cut. Right? Right along there. If you're running in trouble, that's okay. And then we start back right where we were. We don't want to, we want to have as little waste as possible. Okay. Notice I use just one direction, really nice long stroke. Okay. Now, there's still some meat on there. We can go back, we can get it off. Okay, this is the belly of the salmon, right? And it's totally usable. There's another way that you could do the fish if you wanted to keep that all intact, where, because we're gonna portion all this out so soft, it's a uh, pan roast. And so now everything's in a nice, pretty easy to portion out on the same side. But if we wanted to, we could go along, and instead of cutting all the way straight down, we could start from the back, just like we do with our chicken. Start peeling it away all the way down to the bottom, and then you'll have the belly still attached, and you won't have to go through the trouble of taking it off the bottom. But that's a, that's a different story. So, who wants to volunteer to do this one? You scared? I'll do it.